Hello, my name is Marcus. I'm the compiler of a collection of therapy quotes entitled Psychoanalytic Self-Awareness Quotes. This is TQ22, therapy quote number 22. The very young child doesn't feel gratitude since he misjudges reality in the most amazing way. His yardstick is his own megalomania. He regards everything good coming from the outer world, not as such, but as a gift he gives himself. One might say that even if the situation in early childhood were as described, it would seem that the child would grow up and correct his misjudgment. True, the neurotic child does grow up. The neurotic child does grow up. His unconscious however, doesn't. Neurosis is basically an anachronism. The repressed part of the personality governs. His Majesty the Baby in the neurotic individual is the leader, not his logic, that is, his conscious. No neurotic is unconsciously as old as his birth certificate indicates. In unconscious development, he has remained between the ages of one and three. E. Burglar. I thought I would use this quote by Burglar to introduce one of his other theoretical concepts, which he calls infantile megalomania. So basically, in the womb, all of the needs are magically met for the baby, and the the speculation is maybe that it's as if maybe we can imagine the baby thinking he might be like a little god. Wow, he just everything he needs is just handed to him. And even after birth, it's, it's sort of similar. And uh, and after a few months, maybe the child, maybe the child has the impression that he 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 might think he has a need, and then it's the mother intuits it and then meets his need. So again, the child still thinks he's a little god, and and uh, burglar's term uh, is infantile megalomania, and uh, that that term's going to come up quite a bit. Um, yeah, it's so it's an old jargon term, but I think it, it it's it's actually helpful because it emphasizes the infantile aspect in the unconscious, so we're dealing with the unconscious age, not the chronological age, right? So in the first part of the quote, the young child doesn't feel gratitude, right? Because he thinks he's a god. You don't see gods saying thank you, right? Um, and similarly, a person with a narcissistic pattern, right? Somebody who's psychically arrested in that early first year, you don't see many narcissists expressing gratitude. They think, of course I got this. I, I, I'm, I'm so important, of course, right? <laughs> they think it's natural because their, right, their yardstick is their infantile megalomania. That's how they measure things based on that infantile megalomania. They're entitled, they're grandiose. So all the material out there about narcissism, okay, burglars just using the, the, the term infantile megalomania as underlying it from an unconscious point of view. You know, Burglar has one quote where he says, um, cynicism gratifies infantile megalomania. Because cynicism, you're always putting yourself up and the other one down. So gratifies that infantile megalomania, that, that high status of him being so important. And I mentioned earlier before, before that Burglar had a quote about humor. If people laugh at the same kinds of jokes, it means they share the same inner conflicts or psychic structure. So maybe there's, maybe you can see some of that, like um, not everybody enjoys um, dark humor or sardonic humor or a very cynical humor. But notice, you know, it does seem like people with, with um, the narcissistic pattern, um, maybe they might enjoy that because they're always they always see reality from that yardstick of them being above everyone, the infantile megalomania, right? 
So, you know, Berger speaks very directly. Um, this, this, he, he wrote in the 40s and 50s and 60s, right? And, um, and his personality, based on his writings, was quite, quite direct. You know, there's no audio or video of Berger, so we don't know how he sounded or how, how, he, how he was on video. All, all we have is, uh, is um, all we know about, uh, about him is through his, through his books and articles. But um, I learned a lot from Edmund Burke. He he wrote a he wrote a he wrote about maybe a hundred different topics or maybe more. He tried to cover so many things. Um, he, he's most famous for this whole writer's block topic, and I'll save that for another time. Um, you know, some writers are just writing as a defense mechanism, and if they get too close to the real issue, then they're blocked. So. They have to go back to the defense mechanism. So if the defense mechanism runs out, then they're blocked, something like that. So this, yeah, that writer's block, that's his most famous, uh, what he's most known for. But he's written about other, so many things. Um, maybe the second most famous concept of his was, um, well, not the second, but, but one, one other concept that he's a little bit known for was this the psychology of gambling? He has this uh, uh, theory that um, on the surface people may go to the casino or, the, or whatever racetracks or whatever, you know, for something to do or for social reasons or to escape the home or for escape their problems or. Um, Maybe it's exciting and all that, but he he's saying that um, that maybe that underneath it, unbeknownst to the person, there's an unconscious like motivation, which the person isn't aware of, which is the repetition compulsion of being refused, of needing love and getting refused. So Burgle argues that uh, that the infant came out had needs and many times they weren't met, and he couldn't do anything about it. So he thinks the casino that the person might unconsciously project the, <laughs> the memory because remember repetition compulsion we're trying to master the trauma so he projects the mom the, the image memory of the mom onto whatever the the, the racetrack or whatever it is um, and then he loses so it's the repetition. He had a need. He wanted, he wanted something from mother or the racetrack. So the racetrack is now the mother in symbolic form. And the racetrack uh, refused him. And that's, that's the repetition compulsion. That's what Burglar, yeah, he called, he all, that's also a form of negative magic gesture he, to himself, I suppose. Um, so he, 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 there's that pleasure in displeasure, right? The term psychic math implies there's the pleasure in the, going to the racetrack and there's the displeasure of losing. And that's his unconscious uh, attempt to master the trauma of needing love from the mom but then being refused from the mom. So he, needed, he wanted to win the jackpot at the track and, and he lost this kind of thing. Anyway, that's just one of his uh, little, one of his points. Um, anyways, uh, okay, I think I'll I'll pause it here for now. Um, more from Burglar to come. He has a wealth of material. Um, right. Okay. So I'll st I'll stop for now. So thank you very much. I'll see you next time. This, um, by the way, has been TQ. 22, uh, the second quote on Burglar. TQ21 was the first quote on Burglar, and I'm making this the, the, the second quote on Burglar. Right. Bye for now.